led to, to cover the, the topic of baptism, scriptural baptism. And I'll be doing it over maybe three to four services, including Sunday and then next Wednesday, maybe even the following Sunday. By the grace of God, we will be having baptisms right on the 16th. So when the baptistry will be ready. So I know Brother Luke, Brother Brad has expressed interest. I don't know about my children that are not been baptized. I will discuss it with them. So I want you to listen attentively to what's being taught the next few days or next few services. And, of course, Andrew and Baby Lynn, I need to discuss. They did express interest, but I need to hear, you know, I don't take it for granted. You know, and we're not pushy, right? I want to make sure that the Lord has placed it in their heart, you know, that, you know, that this is the church for them. So, before I get to that, there's something I want to address, not necessarily with our church specifically, but what's happening here in Ontario. This is something that's really something I've been pondering or thinking about. Probably about the last 150 years or so, Satan has had a relentless attack within Christendom of you all. I won't even say the church or even the churches, I will say that. But it's been relentless. He's infiltrated. Um, he's you initially, as we, you all, you're all here, <laughs> are aware of, you know, you know modernism versus, and obviously that's, that created the counteraction, you know, the fundamentalism in that. And out of modernism, and then of course you got the biblical stance, out of that, the, you know, with the Hegelian dialectic, you've got, you know, evangelicalism, you've got neo-orthodoxy. So Satan's been working from within to weaken, if you will, the churches within Christendom. I use the broader spectrum. And certainly in the West. And with the exception of really a remnant few churches, and I really do believe that, he's won the battle. He's won that battle. So now he can focus attacking that remnant. You know where I'm going with this, right? You know where I'm going. Those are actually willing to stand for the truth. So now that attack and be prepared for it is not coming from within, yet, although it can still come from within, but it's going to come from without. And over the years, and certainly, I mean, you can attest to that, the church has been relatively, have gotten off relatively scot-free from any kind of outside influence really uh, coming against it. In the form of persecution, that's what I'm talking about. So I want us to open up our Bibles to Job 41 and verse 34. And of course, you'd have to go to verse 1 to find out who the he is here. Le Leviathan, of course, Leviathan can be is a type of the devil himself, Satan. Now this is an article by Brother Grider that just literally hit my feet two hours, two hours ago, but it, it's so pressing home right here on our soil that I, I felt the need, or certainly led, you know, spe especially with the, the ministries that we have, especially, certainly with regards to our outreach and the plan and the way we plan you know, especially with the men after they're baptized and, you know, they're added to the membership of the church, we could certainly, we'll have our Sunday ministry out here, but we'll also have a, more of an itinerary where we're going to be evangelizing and also, you know, with the men, I'm more comfortable going into more hostile environments than I am with, with the women and children, if you will. So Job 41 and verse 34 says, he, he beholdeth all things, he is a king over all the children of pride. All the children of pride. All the children of pride. So this is just released today. Members of the Ontario Legislative Assembly, this is over here at Queen's Park, are pushing a bill to create a 2SL LGBTQI plus community safe zones, safety zones. Safety zones. So preachers, you can't preach because that's hate preach, hate speech rather. I'll play a brief clip as well. 
So members of the Ontario Legislative Assembly are pushing a bill that would create 2SL and whatever the alphabet is there, community safety zones, where offensive remarks about gay people would be prohibited within 100 meters and could lead to a fine of up to $25,000. I'm going to tell you right now, I will be on the border of that 100 meters preaching. I have no, we need to confront it. I don't think we need to, oh, you know, stay back. I understand we need to be wise as serpents and harmless as, harmless as doves. I understand that. But how many churches are really, what is Faithway doing? They had a Bible conference this recently, this past weekend. What are they doing to confront this? They're not doing it. And others, I know, like, what are we afraid of? I understand we need to be wise and, you, need, you know, I understand there's a balance there and you, got, you need to sort of walk that way rather than the two extremes. But I do believe in taking a stand. With the hopes that we could lead at least some of these people to Christ, although they're very hostile. You know, my sister, and although she never intended to hold a Bible study, went into one of the public libraries in Hamilton there and asked if she could hold a Bible study with the children. They said no. Now, you put, you put lipstick on me and the dress and so on and so forth. Not that I will be wearing that, okay? Not, not that I will, okay? <laughs> I've got Mrs. Lavore's face. Oh, boy. No, they don't, that will not be happening. But I guarantee... And I asked for a platform to read whatever perversion they're reading. I don't know what they're reading to them, but and I don't want to know what's in that, those books. And I guarantee I would have a platform. Boom. So even considering the current madness, it would be nigh impossible to pass a bill protecting the interests of pedophiles. And this is what they are. If you're targeting little children with your perversion... You are a pedophile, a grown man dressed like a whore, not like a woman, like a whore, targeting little children with an agenda with the, with this, with, uh, with, the, with, with the specific purpose to groom them and pervert their little minds. You are a perverted pedophile. You are filthy. I have no problem putting that on camera. You are filthy and you need to repent. Because you're under the judgment of God. Now I believe with this kind of legislation, and if it passes, it just further proves that we are under the judgment of God. Because we have a supposedly conservative government. Not that they are. They're not. Supposedly. This is not like in the states where you have liberal Democrat zones. You look at cities like Philadelphia, and literally it's worse than some third world countries. We're in a supposedly, quote-unquote, I'm not saying we are, a conservative province with a conservative government. No. And they're considering this. By the way, out in Alberta, Ra Rachel Notley and the NDP, and they're not in, but their little, they had a drag queen perform at their party. Perverts, filthy. It would be not impossible to, uh, to pass a bill protecting the interests of pedophiles. Everyone, everyone knows that. But if you passed a law protecting the ability of drag queens to perform their erotic dances for children and gave that legal protection, then you might have something there. This is why we want to preach. It's the children. It's the children. If anything, for the children, what did Jesus say concerning the children? Let's go to Matthew 18. I know I might take it a little bit longer because of what I want to bring on baptism. We will be going there. You know, I was really upset to the point of tears when I was reading this. Because I believe this is going to lead to an attack on us. You either shut up and go with the plan, or you speak up and risk something. And we can't compromise or stand. All right, so let's go here. Let's start in verse 6. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me. You hear that? Remember, on Sunday, 
When we were street preaching, there was a little child. How old was that child? He looked to be about two and a half, three years of age. By the way, it was kind of funny because I was preaching at that time. And my wife, they were across the street, right? And the mother of the child said, he told the mother of the child, he's preaching fire. <laughs> he's preaching fire. He wanted to come and see the preacher. The preacher. And then, the, you know, I'm putting everything away. I didn't realize this. And I hear a little cute voice. Hello, sir. And it didn't click because I thought maybe it's one of my children, but it doesn't sound like them. And I looked up. I see this little cute little child. They gave him the trick tracks, remember? But <laughs> it was really sweet. But this, this verse here really attests to that fact, right? Which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. You have to understand, these people are going in there, grooming them, these perverts, and the parents are the enablers. They're killing that faith, that child's faith in Jesus Christ. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must, be, it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Let me see if I'm, uh, if I'm looking for a verse here. Maybe that was it, but I thought there was another verse. 1914, that's it, thank you. 1914, that's exactly the verse I was looking for. We'll start with 13, though. Then were brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray, and the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. 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 So we've got to keep that in mind when you see those. Well, they're targeting children. By the grace of God, they're not going to get to my children because they're homeschooled. It's, you know, it's, you know, and God's going to bless that. He says, mark it down. Drag queens are the gateway for pedophiles. This is why I'm bringing this up. Excuse me, minor attracted persons. No, they're pedophiles, they're perverts. To achieve the protections they are so desperately seeking. This is taking place in Canada right now. It's taking place in our, the province of Ontario, right home, here. As you watch it unfold, the denizens of 2SL, GB, whatever, I'm not going to go through the whole alphabet there, you know it, plus community, now grow freakier by the minute. And they are freaks. They're clowns. They dress like clowns. They would make Jezebel jealous with the amount of makeup and paint they have on their face. And not just up in Canada, but in America and across the whole world. These are the children of pride mentioned in the Bible. The residents of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the reason why Jesus says the last days would be like the days of Lot and Noah. The 2SL LGBTQI plus are an integral part of the coming kingdom of Antichrist. And their myriad, myriad perversions will be featured in their daily worship services. You want hell on earth, he asks? Just miss the tribulation rapture, pre-tribulation rapture, and you'll be there. And this is for Canadian law, and this is from ABC 15 News, and it tells you all about, you know, drag artists, quote, have faced threats and intimidation all across Ontario over the past year. What about, never mind, we'll, get out, we'll leave Ontario, go to Alberta. What about that preacher who right now has been charged twice? And his heart was to protect those children. What about these preachers over the last couple of years that were put in jail for taking a stand? What are their protections? What are you afraid of? Continue on. So, all across over the past year, so Teresa, it was a Wong Tam said, according to an official 
I think who what's, was it, Kristen Wong Tam, really liberal, you know, said according to an official NDP of Ontario press release, quote, businesses and the whole Alphabet Plus community members are being told that they can't be out and proud from, from Thunder Bay to Hamilton to Guelph to Stratford to Welland to Ottawa, even Toronto, and even Toronto. New Democrats are giving Ford's Conservatives a chance to stop hate today by passing my private member's bill. What hate are they stopping? Because they're going to hate the preaching. This is the hate that they want to stop. And this book here exposes their hate. What is construed as hate is love. Because my Bible says that greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. The Lord Jesus Christ laid down his life for everyone, for every one of those that identify as quote unquote transgender, for every man who thinks he's a woman, he laid down his life for them. My Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. My Bible says, herein is love. Not that we loved him, I, I'm, I'm misquoting here, but that he first loved us and gave his life. But, you know, let's go there. First, for, first John uh, 4 and verse 10. I'm not going to misquote that verse, sorry. It's, it's eluded my memory. It can happen, I'm getting old. <laughs> 410, first John, I'm not going to misquote that one. Herein is love, not that we loved him, God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. And you know what propitiation is? It means that he satisfied our sin debt. When he shed his blood and died on that cross, that was satisfactory payment for our sins. It appeased and satisfied God's wrath. Amen. Amen. This is one of the issues that bothers me because it's the children. And it ought to bother you. Remember, children are a heritage of the Lord. And Jesus had harsh words for those that offend children. He said, commit suicide and drown yourself. It would be better for you if you did that. That's what he's saying. So Wong, Wong Tam's bill would allow the Attorney General of Ontario Listen to this, to designate physical addresses in the province as the, the LGBT whatever plus community safety zones for a specified period of time. During the time a safety zone is in effect, probably the month of June, the anti-2SLGBTQ plus, har plus harassment, intimidation, and hate speech bill within 100 meters of the designated address could receive a provincial fine of up to $25,000 according to the NDP's press release. Maybe we need to go back and review our Baptist history. The fines those preachers, those, some of those preachers would have to were fined the equivalent of what $25,000 is today. And even when they were put in jail, they were preaching from the jail, from the, from the window of that jail. They wouldn't stop. They were basically told, shut up. No, I'm going to preach. We need to have that, we need to have that mentality, friends. They were a little bit worked up over that, but, you know, whenever I read that, I was really grieved. I'm going to show you a brief clip here. It's only 30 seconds. Here and it's because this is a, you know, the reason why I'm showing it because this is in our legislature. This is who they are giving a platform to speak. But you cannot have a preacher do the same thing in the same legislature. Okay, I'm just trying to. Okay, let's let me open it up in my video player. Mm -hmm. Okay, here. You will not let fear win. A world without trans people has never existed. A world without drag has never existed, and it never will. Queer people have always been here amongst us. It's only a minute. There are co workers, there are brothers. That's what they're sisters, allowing into our, our, our fathers, legislature. Our families. Drag is art, drag is culture, drag is educational, drag is creative, drag is comedy, but drag is not a crime. 
My name is Carlos Bobo, and thank you so much for your time. Imagine not showing up at your doorstep. It's an abomination. It is an abomination. Let's forget. Good. Let's go to Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5 before we get to our, our message. We will close. It is an abomination. Now we can really, now we can really apply this to the extreme here. Oh, let me, let me, this is going off here. I don't know what's, got something else going here. Uh, oh, here, let me just close that, close that. All right. Okay, 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on what? A woman's garment. For all that do so are what? Are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So that's right. It's an abomination. It's not art. It's not. If it's culture, it's filthy culture. Okay. 